Fellow citizens, good evening. I want to share with you tonight the main lessons my government and I have learned from the coronavirus. A crisis which has caused so much suffering and so many deaths in our country and in the world. And a crisis which will take a long time for our society and economy to recover from. That lesson and my central message tonight is that your suffering has been caused by our failed security policies and only secondarily is this a health care system crisis. Therefore I want to extend my most profound apology to each and every one of you in our country on behalf of my government. The pandemic, as well as other purely civilian challenges to our society, had been predicted, but we ignored the warnings. We now recognize our full responsibility and hope for your understanding and forgiveness. So how could this pandemic take us by such surprise? What did we, did we do so wrong? First of all, let me say, the main, the only reason that this COVID-19 failure happened is that we've been obsessively focused on purely military means for our so-called national security. We've allocated literally all the resources, that is your tax money, to the military sector, so much so that our society became highly militarized but also more and more vulnerable and indefensible. That was not the right way to spend your money. It was not the right way to honor your trust in us. Over time, we were blinded by arms production and export profit interests of tiny but powerful elites. We chose to listen only to advisors who were in reality, not objective, but repeatedly advocated higher military expenditures because it benefited themselves. We were also influenced by, our, by powerful lobby groups, lobbying groups. We chose to not listen to other kinds of expertise. In the process, we created enemies and invented threats to be able to always justify these weapons and higher military expenditures. But in reality, we were our own worst enemies. How can I say that? <clears throat> Because if weapons could create peace on earth, we would have a wonderfully peaceful world today with vision and optimism. We all know that we do not live in such a world. The fact is that this government also, I myself, gave speech after speech about human security and common security and stability and peace, but never asked ourselves what these words meant. As a result, militarist thinking and the military industrial complex has become an unbearable burden on the, our civilian economy and all of society. In addition, it threatens our democracy and our well-being, as we have just seen in this crisis. We cannot ourselves be safe with others if they don't feel safe with us. Self-defense is right and in accordance with international law, but having long-range offensive weapons that automatically threaten somebody else far away can only lead to arms races never bring peace, only endless war. What we need now instead of conf is, is confidence building breaches, not confrontation building and more wars. We need to build peace first and then secure it. Because it's a proven fact by now that the present security thinking will never bring peace to our world. Secondly, under my leadership, the government shall move away 
from military dominated security policies and give priority to human and common security for all, not only in our own society, but for all in this world. We've got to think beyond our own borders. Therefore, we have now established a national high level and very broad based future peace and security commission. Its mandate is to, as quickly as possible, develop a strategy and a concrete three year plan for a fundamental policy change in defense, security, and foreign affairs. This new policy shall, above all, allocate resources to provide human security in a wide sense, including protecting citizens' lives, a first-class healthcare system, civil defense, storing the resources and goods we need in situations of emergency, and prepare society's various authorities to serve you, the citizens, in times of crisis. This new strategy that we call Peace First shall adapt our capacities and institutions to strictly adhere to the UN Charter because all UN member states, and also our country, have signed up to Article 1 of the Charter, which says that peace shall be established, peace shall be created by peaceful means. We, the Member States, must not continue to violate the international law on a daily basis. Fellow citizens, someone has to take the first step. We'll get nowhere in this world if everybody sits and waits for somebody else to take the first step. We will take it and thereby invite a much needed snowball effect. We shall then free the resources, in fact billions upon billions of dollars, and reallocate them to human needs satisfaction and to meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We have human rights, yes, but we also have human duties, and one of them is to alleviate and reduce suffering. There is no reason people shall go hungry to bed. Third and finally, what will this mean for our country? You can expect a reduction of our military expenditures by 50% or so within the next three years and a conversion of industrial, administrative, scientific and other resources to boost civilian human security. That is a safe strategy. No country will take advantage of our military reduction. Instead, the countries that we have characterized as enemies will be grateful to no longer feel targeted by us and thereby we open up for cooperation and trust instead of confrontation. That is security with, not against each other. This also means that my government shall work for the abolition of nuclear weapons. For the first time in the nuclear age in which we live, we now have a legally binding nuclear weapons ban treaty that is ratified by over 50%, 50 countries in the world and aims at total nuclear abolition. This is civilizational progress. And we want our country to be among the pioneers of that desired nuclear free and much safer world. You may now, now ask, what about our country's excellent, highly qualified military personnel? Here's my answer. Some will continue in their present roles while we transform our national defense forces to a purely defensive mode. Others will be transferred to new civilian security sectors. I want to assure you tonight that no one will lose her or his employment, but many will change jobs so that their competence, skills and experience will serve all society and not just a few. That is common sense for two reasons. A change towards civilian means of defense, together with defensive military defense, will boost our economy, because in general military production does not create economic growth to the same extent as civilian investments do. Secondly, I'm sure 
that no human being wants to be employed to plan ultimately death and destructions, perhaps for millions, if there are better alternatives to work for, for the common good. And of course, there are alternatives. My government and I have drawn the main lesson from the terrible coronavirus. We abandoned you, the people, when you most needed us. It must not happen again. My apology would, however, be empty words if we did not make concrete changes in the wake of what we have seen worldwide in 2020. The corona crisis is an opportunity to learn important lessons about our failed security thinking for decades and do things right in the future. So we look forward to working with all our own people and the peoples of the rest of the world to realize the only vision that matters now, and that is to reduce violence against other people, against gender and children, against Mother Nature and against other cultures and religions. In that way, we can create peaceful coexistence in diversity. We don't have to be the same. We can live in diversity, we can be different, we can celebrate difference, and anyhow, live peacefully together. The world's multi-crisis call for determined action now. No more piecemeal politics and modeling through. We know that tomorrow will be decided by the choices we make or don't make today. We must rise over petty differences and pull together our common interests on this planet are much stronger than our small differences. Humanity is faced with an existential choice now. We should not just say it, we should begin to take it serious. It's either continued violence and in the end, no existence. Or it's cooperation and peaceful coexistence. The sooner we make the right choice, the easier it will be to save humanity from the impending crisis. which might become catastrophes for us all. Thank you very much for your attention. I won't ask God to bless you or our country. Indeed, let's bless each other as peacemakers. Thank you very much.